Okay, well hi everyone. We're here in the dark, in the Answer Center, at the Ark Encounter. Actually the whole nation's in the dark, spiritually dark. Actually, dark economically now, right, too. Uh, so we want to give you a very intriguing behind the scenes look at the operation of our 70 foot by 22 foot LED screen that right now we only use at 10% brightness. Correct, yep. Uh, it is absolutely incredible. I have Doug from our AV team here, and Doug is going to be able to give you all the detail, fascinating detail. So, it's pretty... Doug, you're a wealth of information, so <laughs> tell us a bit about this screen. All right, well, as you said, it's uh, 70 feet wide by 22 feet tall. Um, it's made up of 3,080 individual panels that each panel is loaded with LEDs that create the, uh, the pixels that you see that are lit up on the wall. So 3,800 panels. Panels, yep. And how many of those little LEDs would there be on the panels total? On each panel? No, in the total. Oh, uh, it's 4,480 pixels wide by 1,460, if I don't have my numbers backwards, uh, some of the numbers backwards, but I think it's 1,460 tall. So that's millions? It's millions, yeah. It's about 7 million pixels total, roughly, give or take. So 7 million of those little... The LED, little dots, yep. LED lights. Yeah. So it's actually, it's kind of confusing because a lot of people uh, talk about HD, 1080p, which is HD, or they'll talk about 4K. Um, our resolution width-wise on the wall is wider than 4K. Cinema 4K. It's wider than Cinema 4K, but it's not as tall as 4K. So if somebody asks if we have a 4K screen, we technically don't because we don't have the height, but it's wider. Um, so about, the answer is yes and no. Yes and no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes we're, no. we're over width, under height, just because we have this custom screen. So we use this for all sorts of things, like our Christmas programs. Yep. We put up backdrops on here that look 3D. Mm -hmm. And right now, this is not using the full screen. Right? No, it's not using the full screen. Um, this is actually playing one of our uh, videos that we, we show at the ARC, which was actually produced in-house um, by the video department here. And... Um, it's shown at a 16 by 9 format, and our screen is wider than that because of the wide pixels. So we could show them how wide the screen really is here yep. uh, in a moment. Uh, so we'll have our videographer come up on stage, and uh, we'll show the full screen image. Oh, there, you can see the full screen image from down there. And what I'll do as well is I'll get you to stand at one end, I'll stand at one end, and you're going to take one of those panels up and show them what they yep, look like? I'll show everybody the panel. Okay. So you sure we can get it back on again? I think we can get it back on. And it you, you can it might it. not be upside down. <laughs> okay. So as we're coming up here to look at this, I will uh, stand at one end, and Doug will stand at the other. Now, this is social distancing at its best. Yeah, 70 right? foot minimum. You couldn't have better social distancing than this. So we are 70 feet apart, is that right, Doug? 70 feet yep, apart? Yep, 70 feet, right here. And down where I am, there's a panel missing because Doug took it off the wall. He's going to show you that in a moment. And you can sort of see the wires coming out of there. Uh, so, but before we show you that panel and show you how that works, we're going to take you around behind the screen as well because you would think there'd be millions and millions of wires behind the screen, but... Yep. Actually, Doug's going to race down there and give you a little so, talk as to what's behind there. Yeah, what we did here, um, we wanted to have it off the wall so we'd actually have a crossover uh, spot for people to be able to go from one side of the backstage to the other. Um, and everybody thought, oh, you know, you're going to end up with a mess back here with this screen. But if you look, this is a, I mean, it's, it's super clean. We don't have to worry about r messing it up or anything. Um, and the only wires that we have going across are on these cross tees. Um, so that carries electric signal on some of them, and then some of them are, um, are the video signal. And um, this thing takes a lot of electric. There's 36 individual 210-volt uh, or 208-volt uh, electric circuits powering this thing. Um, now, they're not full power right now because everything's at 10%, but if it was full white um, and full brightness, this thing would really be creating some some heat so Doug this screen I know when we built the stage we had to build it to certain specifications because the screen's so heavy correct? right correct this screen weighs almost 11,000 pounds 11,000 pounds 11,000 pounds you're talking like five ton oh it's a lot yeah it's it's a lot 
Um, so we actually, through the stage, there's concrete, um, there's, there's beams that go under the stage, and they're transferred all the way to the basement, to the floor of the basement to support the weight of this. And this is a concrete stage? This has a four inch concrete uh, slab poured stage for uh, And then the floor. stage built on top of that? Yep. And then the panel down here? Oh yeah, so let me grab that. I'm gonna show you one of these panels and how they work. So this is one of the panels here. And as you can see, there's not a lot to it. Um, but you can look at the pixels there Individual dots are each individual pixel that will light up, and these give and there's you seven million of those on this screen. Yeah, there's about seven million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's this panel here. There's three thousand and eighty of these individual panels, and as you look at the back, there's no. Hey, I thought lot you to said it. there wasn't a whole lot to it. That looks like a whole lot to it to me. <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot that we can work on. If we have one of them that goes bad, we can actually send them out, and they'll replace some of the components on them. But um, generally, you just you snap it off of there. It's actually held on by magnets. So we have a special tool um, that actually screws into it, into the panel. It looks like a handle. And this will actually un, kind of pop the, the magnets loose. And um, it, they're, well, they're on there pretty, pretty How strong. about you put that back on? Okay. And then we, we will go. I'm going to set the, my microphone down. And you can pop that back on. And then we'll go down to where the screen is operated from and show you some of the phenomenal things they can do with it. So we'll take you back to the control board and the brain of it is actually up on the mezzanine. So, oh look at that, it came on. You must have yep. done that right. And then it just magnetic. And now this one's a little tricky. I should have did one in the, somewhere else because this trim that's on the bottom here kind of is hard to deal with. So the flip here. Uh, there you go. And that's it. And then when you step away, nobody would actually know that those panels are there. And when the wall goes to black and you're standing on the floor of the stage or the floor of the uh, auditorium, most people have no idea there's even an LED wall up here. Right, they don't realize that. Yeah. Can you go ahead and go to black real quick? So There we are. Yeah, if you come in and look at that, you just think it's a black wall. And now go to full white if you can. Let's see what uh, we do here. And we're going to take you back to the control panel. Let's we'll see if we can get it full white. Full they have white. some graphics full okay. white so they can see how bright it would be. Um, we have graphics kind of loaded in it, so um, white isn't one of the normal graphics we would show because it's bright and obnoxious. <laughs> so we have an operator back there <laughs> we do. doing so we'll this for us. But while they're figuring that out, because it's pretty complex. Uh, let's uh, walk on down there. Oh, there we go. That's full white. So when okay, well, she we'll walks come around the front, she'll be able to see it. Full. When you say full white, that's still 10% brightness? It's still, yeah, it's still not full brightness. It's just the, the brightest that it will be for us right now. Okay, so that's 10% brightness because we only use it at 10%. Yep. Now, someone might ask, okay, well, why did you get one that strong if you don't need the other 90%? Yeah, so actually, most of the LEDs are manufactured. They already are bright to begin with. Um, LEDs make light so much brighter than an incandescent type of a fixture. Um, and so... And so we, we have that screen, and then we have to adjust it for the fact we're inside. Right, yeah, yeah, because they sell these screens for outdoor use. Um, this wouldn't be one, it would be a considered a rental. This is an install, permanent install type of screen. Rental screens are generally made with the cheaper LEDs. Um, because LEDs are pretty much all manufactured in China, and then uh, depending on the specs of the corporation that is building a wall, um, they'll ask for a grade like A, grade one type LEDs or grade three, and those are um, grade one are going to be more c color consistent and even brightness. Um, where you get the cheaper LEDs, they start getting color shifting a lot more. Okay. Um, so. And this screen itself actually is produced in the United States, right? It is, yes. This is actually, uh, it's made by NanoLumens, which is out of Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, so it's an American-made product. Yep, it is. Which is good. So we'll come around the back here, and, and you can tell us, um, our AV person, what they're uh, All right, to do so we here, got, what you want. We got Rick at the, at the console right now, and we can just kind of walk through a little bit of what the Green Hippo video processor can do um, and 
you know, as I've said before, we've got a few different computers that are running graphics. We've got ProPresenter, we get, um, we can do PowerPoint, we can do, you know, another computer. If it's got Keynote, we can do that as well. Um, but our in-house setup is pretty much Green Hippo and ProPresenter. Um, and so with Green Hippo, I think you've got, yeah, you've got Green Hippo going, and then we've got a Barco video processor, video wall processor that will do the, the video switching and, and kind of... Um, picture and picture views that we, we do. So if you want to talk about some of that and oh, do some. I, I didn't know you were going to put me on the spot. Sure. Well, right here, we are obviously uh, demoing Green Hippo, as Doug had mentioned. This is actually the hippo tizer is what we call this. This is where we have the control surface. We can basically bring up multiple layers. We can even layer things, obviously, on top of one another. So let's just say that we wanted to, uh, you know, put like a graphic, let's say, Oh, uh, I don't know. Let's say we want to pull up Southern Salvation and one of their, you know, Steve Hess and whatnot up on screen. We can go ahead and put them on top of or even blend it through other graphics that we have going on. We can also pull in live feeds. If we had a camera that is on, um, you know, say the piano player, we could go ahead and put him up there and do effects like uh, in live time. If you guys have heard of green screening before, we can go ahead and have Hippo automatically erase that background and replace it with something else and then blend it into something else on the screen. If that's not enough, if we don't like, say, the colors of something that's on the screen, let's say what I'm playing right now, um, you know, the graphics are just not matching, you know, the color that we're hoping to uh, achieve, for instance. Um, let's say that red, I don't like it because it's just a little bit too, you know, stark of a contrast. I can come in here real quick. We have like RGB controls and let's say I want to get rid of some of this and I want to pull out some, you know, greenish blue tint. I can go ahead and ask those colors to form and mesh to, you know, whatever it is I'm trying to match. In this particular case, I would want to take away the green, add some red and blue, and, you know, we can just sit here and play until our heart is content, basically. So, um, what else would you like to know? Um, yeah, so basically that's the Green Hippo, so that's a graphics engine, basically. And then the other uh, component we have here that you're looking at on the right side is the uh, interface for the Barco processor, which is our basically our video uh, switcher. And if you look here, you can, you can take basically any input that we can throw at it, um, whether it's our ProPresenter computers, uh, video camera feed from our live uh, video guys set up, um, Can we show the Christmas one that we used at Christmas? Oh, there it is. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Great minds think alike. <laughs> there we are. Yeah. So on top of that, we can also overlay other things. Um, we can stretch that with that image. We can do you know uh, many many things. We've got kind of our generic list of stuff that we do on a day to day basis already stored. In, in How the about system. the one with the arc door? Uh, arc door. Yeah. Let's uh, find that one and bring it up. And you know when you're sitting here <clears throat> out in the audience, they look three dimensional. That look three-dimensional. It looks like you're actually in the arc and it's, it's going to be hard to tell as they're watching it on the video here, but it looks three-dimensional. And then we've got our screens uh, on each side. So as we do our presentations, they come up there on the screen. Yeah, and if this screen wasn't at 10 percent, it would be so bright. It would, it would basically give people a headache because the room is, is at a certain level. Um, that screen would be so bright, people would get headaches just from looking at it. So that sort of walked them through pretty well, the uh, uh, workings of the LED screen. Yep, yep. Now, there, behind the scenes, there's even more. There's, if you go up into the brain, which we looked at, um, there's the actual processor up, are up there. So like I said earlier, these are all remotely operated. Um, if we had to store all of the, the nanolumens processors and everything, um, it, we would just have too much sitting on this front of house desk. OK, so, so up on our mezzanine up yep. here. Uh, and in fact, we did a tour of behind the ANSYS Centre, and uh, when they looked uh, up, up there, they would have seen uh, the brain, what yep. you call the brain, uh, that runs uh, all of this. So up there on that mezzanine, uh, in a room there, we have all of these racks. Yep. And the, what do you call it, the hippo? Um, well, there's the, the Barco E2, and then there's the hippo, green hippo, and there's on top of that, there is the nanolumen processors which Nanolumens is the manufacturer of the wall. Um, so they have their own proprietary processor that actually takes all that information, and spits it out to the actual wall itself. So people just, people just walk in here, 
sit down, see the screen. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. And watch us use it. They yeah. have no idea what goes on behind the scenes no, and it's, what really makes all this work. There's, there's a lot. And there's a lot to take it, a lot of people it takes to keep it running. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it's, it's a talent that people have. Uh, you have to have a mindset for that kind of interest. A lot of people, they're not interested in, in pushing those kind of buttons right. and, and seeing that. But um, for the people who are into it, like Rick and Caitlin, um, they do a wonderful job at what they do down here and keeping it going. And it's amazing the talent the Lord has brought to this oh, ministry. It is, yeah. I mean, I'm, I continue just to be amazed and thank the Lord. Uh, so if you enjoy these behind the scenes programs, Monday to Friday, while the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter are closed to the public, and the New Beginning movie that we're showing here, we produced it, yep. actually. In and Doug was a part of that. And we show it here each day when we're open. And that's actually and what was playing at the beginning. It's uh, absolutely spectacular the way it's done. Tell people, if you want to see this incredible screen, I mean, there wouldn't be that many auditoriums that have a screen this quality, would they? Oh, no, no, no. This is, uh, this is hard to come by. It's, uh, it's made some raves across the AV world, and we, we actually have some uh, publications going to do a report on it. So. so it's sort of unique. It is, yeah. Yeah. This uh, scale. This uh, scale yeah. for, yep. for what it is, the technology. Yep. But you'll have to come to the Answer Center, come to visit the Ark Encounter. As soon as we're open, as soon as we're allowed to open, we'll be blasting that across uh, the internet, of course, and letting everyone know. Uh, but please pray God moves in this nation to get this nation back again so our, our staff can come back working so that we can have all these visitors coming in here again. And with that, I uh, look forward to joining you on another Behind the Scenes, 7 p.m. Mondays to Fridays while the Ark Encounter and the Creation Museum are closed to the public. Have a great day.